friends welcome back to nurses nook and corner before going into today's topic i would like to thank for those who are supporting our channel if you have any suggestion or topic for improving our channel share in the comment box today in this video we are going to know more about potassium what does it do in our body how does it increases leading to hyperkalemia what causes to increase the potassium what happens if it increase and how to manage it let's know about it in detail if you didn't subscribe the channel, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon to get the uploaded videos immediately. Let's see the function of potassium. Potassium is one of the main electrolyte essential for both cellular and electrical function. It is a positive ion found mainly intracellular. Along with sodium, potassium regulates the water balance and acid base balance in blood and tissues and plays a crucial role in transmission of electrical impulses in the heart. The active transport of potassium in and out of the cell is important to cardiovascular and nerve function. When the potassium enters the cell, it instigates a sodium-potassium exchange across the cell membrane. In the nerve cells, this generates the electrical potential that allows the contraction of nerve impulses. When the potassium leaves the cell, it restores repolarization to the cell which allows the nerve impulse to progress. This impulse generates muscle contraction and regulates the heartbeat. The renal mechanism in maintaining potassium is that renin angiotensin aldosterone plays an important role in regulation of sodium and potassium pump. The kidney reabsorbs sodium and excretes the potassium thereby maintaining the electrolyte level. When the sodium intake increases the intravascular blood volume thus raising blood pressure and consequently increasing pressure in the glomeruli. The overall effect is a decrease in renal function. Therefore, as the glomerular filtration rate decreases, the potassium excretion becomes less effective and the potassium in the blood increases leading to hyperkalemia. In this video, we are discussing about hyperkalemia, that is increased potassium level. In medical, always hyper represents increase, that is high. Cal represents potassium. Emia represents blood. Therefore, hyperkalemia denotes increased potassium level in the blood. The normal level of potassium in blood is 3.5 to 5 millimole per liter. If it goes about 5 millimole per liter, then we call them as hyperkalemia. Let's see the causes of hyperkalemia. The mnemonic mission is used YUM medicine, A acidosis, C cellular destruction, H for hypohaldosteronism, I for increased potassium intake, N for nephron damage and E for excretion problem. The first is medication. The medication like ACE inhibitor and NSAIDs block the angiotensin aldosterone regulation therefore decrease the glomerular filtration rate leading to potassium retention. The spinolactone is a potassium sparing diuretic as you all know therefore it leads to high potassium level. In acidosis, it causes the potassium to move from intracellular to extracellular fluid that is to the blood in exchange of hydrogen ion. Therefore, it leads to hyperkalemia in blood plasma. The same mechanism occurs in cellular destruction that is shift of potassium from intracellular to extracellular. The other renal causes are hypohaldosteronism leading to decreased GFR, increased potassium intake because of diet, damage, nephron and excretion problems which ultimately increases the potassium level leading to hyperkalemia. What happens if the potassium level increases? Potassium helps in contraction of muscles. Due to increased potassium level in the blood, it starts to affect the muscles that control breathing. The lungs doesn't receive enough oxygen because of the heart's decreased ability to pump blood. Therefore, it leads to respiratory failure causing hypoxemia. In GI, the potassium makes the smooth muscle contraction to be weak to coordinate the forward movement of the gastrointestinal tract which leads to nausea, vomiting, buildup of abdominal gas and diarrhea. The neuromuscular problem that arises because of high potassium are muscle weakness, cramping, tingling and numbness. Sometimes it may also lead to altered mental status of the patient. 
If potassium accumulates more than normal, then you can find abnormal ECG rhythm. It is also dangerous sometimes leading to heart block or cardiac arrest. Hence, monitoring ECG for hyperkalemic patient is more important. The ECG variation are you can find a tall or peaked T waves. If you find tall T wave with no P wave or with prolonged PR interval, then we can suspect for heart block. Sometimes widened QRS complex with tall T wave is suggestive of complete heart block due to hyperkalemia. Therefore, it is crucial to monitor continuous ECG for hyperkalemic patient. Now let's see the treatment for hyperkalemia one by one. The first line medication in severe cardiac arrhythmic patient is calcium gluconate. The calcium gluconate is available as 10 ml 10 percentage, which can be given in large pore cannula over 10 minutes, monitor ECG and repeat the dose after 5 minutes. The two things to note is that first is it may cause extravasation leading to tissue necrosis and second, it should not be administered with bicarbonate as it may cause precipitation of calcium carbonate. What does the medication calcium do? The calcium salts reduce the cardiac arrhythmic effect of potassium by binding and stabilizing the cardiac resting membrane potential in hyperkalemia. Clearly understand it only reduces the risk of arrhythmia but does not lower the serum potassium. Also be cautioned. In patients who have suspected or known digoxin toxicity, as calcium salts can potentiate digoxin causing fatal arrhythmias. In such cases, calcium should be given over 30 minutes with continuous monitoring. The next treatment option is 10 units of insulin with 50% dextrose in 50 ml syringe infused over 15 to 20 minutes. The insulin shifts the potassium ion from extracellular to the intracellular space and reduces the serum potassium. The insulin is administered with dextrose in order to prevent the hypoglycemic effect. If necessary, an infusion of 10% dextrose should be started if patient goes for hypoglycemic effect. The IV insulin dextrose should bring down the serum potassium by approximately 1 millimole and the effect lasts between 3 to 6 hours. The dose can be repeated several times if necessary but should not delay with definitive management. And also consider giving 10 to 20 mg nebulized salmutamol which can provide an additive effect to insulin dextrose in driving potassium into cells. This should be only given as adjuvant therapy to insulin dextrose, never as monotherapy. Note that salmutamol carries a small risk of precipitating angina in patients with ischemic heart disease, particularly if they are tachycardic. Recheck potassium level at 1 to 2 hours and again at 4 to 6 hours to suspect ongoing hyperkalemia. Recent urea electrolyte and RFT, repeat venous or arterial blood gas, repeat ECG and full set of vital signs. If still the potassium is high and the patient is on cardiac arrhythmia, then the definite method of excess potassium removal is hemofiltration or dialysis. Thanks for watching. If you have any doubts or suggestion, give in the comment box. If you didn't subscribe the channel, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon to get the uploaded videos immediately. Once again, thanks for watching. Keep supporting. Let's see in next video with the interesting topic.